The Rescue Simulation Center is being touted as a leap forward in how rescue professionals are trained to respond to the increasingly complex demands of modern disasters. Pebbles built for realism and safety, the four-story, 3,000 square meter facility includes, among others, a five meter deep survival pool for aquatic and helicopter underwater training. Other students, the doctors and nurses, they can go into the hospital and they can practice with patients in a controlled environment. But rescues don't happen, thankfully, every single day. So it's not every day that a building will collapse or something. So to prepare rescuers, we need to create a simulation that is very realistic, but in a controlled way that's safe. And then they can go through those procedures those, that they do, and they become competent and they become trained. Also, if there's a problem during the simulation, we can stop, we can make corrections, which you wouldn't be able to do in, in a real disaster. So that's the idea of the center. It's to simulate in a very high fidelity way different types of rescue. The center will play a pivotal role in strengthening Africa's resilience to emergencies and disasters while elevating the standard of professional rescue education on the continent. The perception is that nothing good comes out of Africa. This is an opportunity to show that a lot of great things are happening in Africa. And this is an opportunity for us to go out there and show the world what can be done from Africa in Africa. And it's up to us to stand up tall and show the world that we can do it for ourselves and we are doing it for us. Yes. The center offers realistic, high-fidelity simulated environments to strengthen preparedness, coordination, and technical expertise. The establishment of the State of Art Rescue Center is both timely and strategic. South Africa continues to face natural industry emergencies that test the resilience of our systems. We've witnessed the devastating floods in KwaZulu-Natal in 2020, recurring wildfires in the Western Cape, and of course not forgetting the building collapse in George in the Western Cape that claimed many lives in persistent droughts in the Eastern Cape, and of course Limpopo. Now these events demonstrate the urgent need for preparedness, coordination, and trained rescue capacity. Rotor wing aircraft safety and patient care simulation zones and a basement level urban search and rescue area featuring configurable confined space tunnels, shoring systems and heavy lifting jigs are part of the center. The university says this is more than just a mere university project, that it stands as a national and continental asset. That's the big advantage. I do believe that this center is not a UJ asset. It's a regional continental asset. And we're very excited to share what we do here and to bring people in from all over because its primary purpose is, yes, to serve our students that we train here, but we have allocated days where other role players can come. I mean, people training in here are not just our students. We've got the police coming, we've got the defence force, we've got um, rescue organisations, uh, search and rescue, volunteer organisations. So the centre is, is really just honestly a regional asset. The centre has also been designed to cater for teaching, learning, assessment and research of a multitude of specialised rescue disciplines. Yuri Sanjamela for CGTN in Johannesburg, South Africa.